Hey guys, today I'll be showing you another restoration project I've been working on, and uh, this video is also for Analog US, who actually owns this instrument. So this one actually will be for sale uh, through Analog US. Um, I restored it specifically for them, so it's a pretty cool job here. But uh, what I did to this one, I went through it and replaced all the common failure trend components, which you guys always hear me talk about. Had to do a lot of circuitry repair in this one. It had aftertouch issues. I uh, had a circuit failure as well as I had to do some work to the force sensor. Got everything calibrated and adjusted so it has a really great response on the force sensor across the whole octaves. And uh, then did some other things just to make sure it's going to hold up for whoever gets this instrument. You know, just my typical, uh, typical stuff I do. But um, it had already been somewhat serviced, so the key bed had already been rebuilt. So no new key bushings here, but it does have new key bushings in it. And uh, I just went back and checked the alignment and set the uh, action and all that kind of stuff to make sure it's, it feels the way it's supposed to feel. Um, it is missing the badge, but actually Don has the badge. Uh, so they're going to be putting a badge on it when they get it back. Because uh, I don't have any more of these badges. So that will be addressed... Uh, when it's on the market here but cleaned it up really good as you can see it has a brand new overlay uh, actually was you can buy them at analog us um, but a really nice overlay i'm really impressed with how it looks the uh, the texture of it's really nice and it fit in there really well you know as far as alignment with the knobs and everything so that's a great option if you are if you have a multi mode and you need this interface panel but uh, yeah, just cleaned everything up really good. As you can see, washed all the knobs, uh, slider caps. Just went through this thing with a fine tooth comb and got it like it needs to be. Um, and just addressed anything that could possibly be a problem in the future as much as possible. Uh, went through the ribbon controller, fixed it back up. Originally it had this uh, shipping tape over it, like that right there. As you can see, it looked really tacky. And then it had the tape underneath it. So I actually rebuilt this thing completely. Got rid of that uh, tape. And got it cleaned up. Walk around to the back here. You can see the wood grain sticker is still in good shape on these. On this particular unit. Uh, walk around here. You can see your cell number here done. Uh, 2003. It's the seal number. Cleaned everything up. Took all the knobs off here as well. Cleaned everything up so it's got a full bill of health all the way around it but um, yeah it's just a this is a really cool synthesizer so for those that don't know the multi moog is an expanded micro moog so this is basically a micro moog from this point here so all this is micro moog but then you got an extension board that actually adds extra oscillator after touch and some other nice little features what's really nice about it though is you is you gain a lot of inputs and outputs as well so you got your aftertouch output you got your ribbon output your actual this when i say ribbon i'm talking about your actual pitch ribbon so not only does this instrument stand alone as a really cool instrument but it also makes a great controller for your other synthesizers your other analog synthesizers where you're using cv voltage and you know cv control great for a modular interface etc so it's just a really cool synthesizer but uh has 12 hours of burn in on it uh, so just make sure everything held up like it's supposed to hold up and it's, it's done really good I'm very happy with this unit but um, anyways let me put the cam on the tripod here and I'll give you guys a, a full demo of it all right so first we're gonna start with the oscillator section here and uh, once again you got two oscillators in this unit because it's a uh, micro Moog oscillator with expansion part of the expansion they put an extra oscillator in this thing and uh, so you got two oscillators which is really nice for the multi Moog but we're going to start first with them both combined, and I'll show you that the scaling across both oscillators are really nice against each other. And then I'll show you each oscillator independently and go through the other sections of these oscillators. So first of all, here's oscillator A and B combined. we got a sawtooth set up. How great those oscillators sound against each other. See 
sound great those oscillators sound through the footages um, also I did calibrate the interval control of oscillator A I'll show you this with them still combined for a plus fifth octave and then a negative fifth octave so it gives you a, a full plus and negative fifth range of this uh, first oscillator oscillator A T-tune just a little bit, uh, it really fattens up the sound. But you can also get them really tight when you want it to be very accurate. So that's the nice thing about having these oscillators tuned and calibrated like that. So now what we'll do, we'll go over to oscillator A only, and I'll show you the wave shape uh, uh, knob here. Now something to also note about the multi-mode design. Um, as you turn the AB mix knob, the way they sum the two oscillators together, you do get a volume decrease when they're mixed and you'll hear the oscillators coming a little louder as you turn this knob and I'll show you that in camera here. So if we turn this knob right now in, in unison or mix, we're going to turn A on only. <laughs> So you can hear it gets a lot louder as you go to just one oscillator here. But here's oscillator A, so we'll go to the waveform. There we're at a square wave. back at a sawtooth. So that's the controls offered by the oscillator A. Now we'll switch over to oscillator B. Now this one has the same features but has one little extra thing I'll show you. So we have the wave shape. Same thing, we got the square wave. Now in this oscillator you have something called doubling and what this is is it's just a sub oscillator, some sense called a sub oscillator, uh, but basically it's just a divider that runs off of the uh, oscillator B. So it gives you a, a, a divide by two or divide by four. So you get a, a one octave down or two octaves down. So you can kind of see how this sounds. <laughs> What I do love about how Moog approached this is they actually did put it with a, a knob so you can control the mix of, of your actual uh, sub oscillator. A lot of synthesizers either on or off so you don't really get to mix it like you do on, on the uh, multi Moog and micro Moog. And what's really nice is when you combine the two oscillators back together you add a little bit of this, uh, this doubling and it really gives you a nice extra little bit of harmonic content. Although it's uh, in it's exactly in, in uniform with oscillator B, it does give you just a little something extra as you'll hear. So we'll bring it in. And now what we'll do actually go to square wave on all these, uh, these A and B oscillators. without the doubling. So 
so you can hear them. So it really adds a little something extra to it. Um, just even though it's just a two oscillator synth, this little you know sub oscillator does add something to it. So that's the oscillator section. I will go and show you a few of the keyboard features since we're talking about the the frequency and pitch, etc. Here. So going back to octaves real quick and the oscillators, you've actually got so you got. Uh, 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2, but then you got a wide frequency just like what you found in the micro mode. And so when you go into wide frequency mode, you can actually sweep the frequency using a, a, a knob here. That's how that works. So you go to wide frequency and you just got this nice little control. It seems kind of gimmicky uh, until you get into some of the architecture of what the micro mode and multi mode can do. It really lends itself nice for some of the uh, the uh, the ringing and stuff that you can do with the filter, etc. Which we'll go over that here in a minute. So that's the oscillators there. Uh, let me show you the glide circuit. So right now we have a uh, a glide switch on the micro on the multi mode. So this is not found on the micro mode. You just have the glide knob. So we can have the glide knob set anywhere and until we flip the glide switch it won't have any glide. So as you can hear. Say a glide switch works. It's a really handy switch. What's also interesting is we have the pitch ribbon over here, which I actually uh, went through and cleaned up and uh, got this set back up like factory here. Um, you've got a ribbon routing switch. So when it's in the middle position, it's not going to do anything internal, but you do also have an external uh, CV output for your ribbon. So this thing also lends its ha uh, itself really nice as a controller for analog synthesizers. So right now you can see we have nothing in the ribbon. <laughs> So we'll make it control A and B. Or we can make it control just oscillator A. So we'll switch it over here. So that's a really nice feature there. So that's your pitch controls there uh, with the accessory modulation and aftertouch. We'll go over that here in a, in a little bit. So that's your oscillators. So next what we've got, we've actually got the noise source. I'm going to use this oscillator switch here. We can actually put the oscillator drawn or off. So that's just going to be an elf note reference. You can see. We're going to turn it off so we have no aud uh, audio from the oscillators. Now you got your noise source. I'll show you that this works. So we'll bring this level up. Got plenty of volume level there. So that's your noise source there. Now we'll go to the filter. So I'm going to turn the oscillators back off for this. Uh, I'm going to show you this real quick. So the filter in this thing is, is unique. Uh, it's unique to any other Moog model. Uh, the Micro Moog and, and uh, Multi Moog both have the same architecture. It's actually designed by Jim Scott, and it's just a really, really cool approach to this filter. Um, so what it does is it's actually not just a filter, but it's actually a true sine wave oscillator uh, in the way it's designed and, and the way it's, it's controlled by CV. Um, it's still the transistor ladder filter we know of that we love by Moog. So it's still the transistor ladder, but it's just the way that they combine some things in this circuitry design to make it a little bit different. Uh, and, and for that reason, it actually has a different tone, it has a little bit different flavor, and it does some things a little bit different. So the first thing that makes it unique is that it's actually linked to the octave footage switch of the oscillators. So most filters, once you tune them up, it's kind of fixed in a frequency and you have to use your cutoff to reset the next frequency 
uh, our step up in frequency or down in, in frequency an octave, so to speak. Not in this. You set your frequency and then you can actually switch your footage and it changes the octaves of your filter. So that's really unique. Um, but we also got a, a switch down here called filter mode. And so what it does right now, if we have emphasis turn all the way up, a cutoff set at zero, you'll hear that we have no, the filter does nothing. The filter is absolutely not self-oscillating or anything, which you typically see it self-oscillate at 10. What it does is it actually doesn't self-oscillate until you go to tone. Now you actually hear it self-oscillate. As you can hear, now it's actually a tone, a sine wave generator oscillator. And we got the footage, which you, you'll hear what I just talked about. So there's your filter working as an actual sine wave oscillator with its own footage here. So that's a really cool, cool function there of this filter. Um, if we turn it out of tone, and then we just go back, you, as you heard, it doesn't do anything, but it's excited off the uh, harmonics. So it actually gets a resonance based off harmonic content. So right now we're, we're in normal mode. We got the oscillators back on. So you're actually hearing the oscillators. So right now we're normal, we'll go to full. We still have emphasis control because it says the resonance. actually bring up the amount of contour here and uh, just kind of put a little bit of contour on it. I'll go over the contour here in a minute more detail but as you can hear it's not the typical Moog sound it's got a very unique sound it's almost arpish but you do have that Moog you know tone once you go into tone mode because you open up the emphasis and it is with the with the uh, envelope generator uh, our filter contour that's in full mode we'll go back to uh, normal and you'll hear it be a little bit brighter in normal mode versus the I love the harmonics you get off this filter. It's a little bit different flavor, like I say, than typical Moogs. And I'm going to just give you an example of this real quick. So we're going to put just a little bit of reverb on the mix with this filter with this, uh, this nice... And it's just that little extra touch. As you can hear, it just has a really good sound. It's a, a different type of filter. And of course, you can go to tone mode. And now the filter is going to have that hard self-oscillation going on. 
And it's, it's nice to note too, when you're in tone, your emphasis knob doesn't really do anything. It kind of bypasses the, the uh, tolerance of this pot, so it actually increases it higher than what the level does with the actual uh, potentiometer. So it gives it a, a full tone mode there. So that's, that's part of your filter, but also what makes the filter unique. I'm going to turn the, uh, the uh, filter contour back down. You've got a function here called filter mod by oscillator. And what this uh, switch does, it actually injects the oscillator's frequencies into the CV line of the filter to give you a, a ringing effect. Uh, which actually gives you that L-film synthesis kind of tone, which you hear me talk about mini modes quite often. So right now it's off. We're going to put it into weak. Now then, we'll put a little envelope generator back on this, our contour. And then we've got strong. As you can hear, it's pretty wild. But what's really impressive, we'll turn that back off for a second on the uh, filter mod by oscillator. If we actually set the oscillators up, you got the switch which allows you just to drone, as mentioned, the oscillators. So now just an elf note reference. Now let's go here. Then we'll go here and go to full. Now we'll put the uh, the same modulation. Turn the oscillators off altogether. Now back and filter. Anyway, as you can hear, that filter is pretty cool. It does some, some unique things. And of course, you can get, you know, just tweaking this thing, you can get some, a lot of different kind of sounds out of this filter. So anyways, uh, you've heard the envelope generator just a little bit for the filter. Uh, we'll go to, I'll go and show you that a little bit more in depth. We've got the oscillators off. We'll put the filter in tone mode so you can hear it. So the filter, it actually has a, 
a mount of control like a mini mug, but in this case you have a plus and a negative. So it's actually, uh, it'll invert it. So for example, if we go here, you can see it's a, it's a normal slope, or we can turn it the other way around. So you can hear how that works. I uh, will set everything to, to uh, zero. So it's just gonna be a click. So we'll bring up the attack first. So we'll bring up a little bit of attack. So there's your attack, we got the release. But you can get some really nice punchy. You can get some almost drum like patterns out of it. So it sounds really, really great. It's got just a, a very, the filter is very interesting in this, <laughs> as mentioned. It just, it just has a completely different type of approach. So anyways, that's your filter contour. You've also got the switch here that you've seen me selected over here. It's called filter sustain. So right now, if we have a little bit of a release set and I hold in the key, it's going to follow out the release. If I bring it back up here in the, in the mount of contour. So you can say I hold in the key, it falls out. If we set this over to the other setting, It'll hold it to let off a note, as you can see. So it's a really handy uh, switch there. So that's the filter contour. Now we'll go over here, turn the oscillators back on, and we'll go to the uh, loudness contour. So we'll set everything to zero. So here's just a click. Bring up some release time. Sorry, the train's going by. Let this train get by real quick. So anyways, we'll set everything to zero here. We'll bring up our uh, attack time. So as your attack, set back zero, it's just a click. And then there's your release. You can hear it's got a pretty long release time. And same thing here. So we set this thing back to where it's going to be a fairly fast release. We got the same switch for the uh, loudness. So loudness sustain switch. It'll hold in as long as uh, until left the note. Versus that. So that's how that works. Now going to the loudness contour and filter contour. Something that's also added on the multi mode is you have single or multi triggering. So right now we're in single triggering. So if I hit uh, uh, upper note and then lower note, you'll hear it will never re-trigger, as you can see. If I switch this over to multi trigger, versus this. See, so that works. We've also got another switch on this thing. Now this is actually found in the Micro Moog as well. It's called the Release Switch. And this is very much like the Decay Switch found on the left hand control of a Mini Moog. So for example, right now, here we got that release time. We switch this, we lose it. So that's your control section. Now we get to the more fun stuff as well. We got the aftertouch circuitry. So I'll show you how this works. Now I spent a lot of time with this aftertouch circuitry getting it all where it was uh, consistent across the octaves. Uh, and I, I think it's I think it's done pretty good. Let me adjust my mic real quick. Hang on a minute. There we go. So uh, like I said, uh, I've done a lot of adjustment in this. Had to do a lot of repairs in this circuitry here. Um, so we'll go to bin first. I'll set A and B. We've got a mount control and then a destination of what you want the force sensor to do. And there's some really fun stuff in this uh, 
this right here. So first of all, we're going to be on just A and B. So talking about how even this thing is, we'll go up in frequency. I've got it set where it's pretty even across. You can you can definitely you know tell it's it's really well. It's equal pressure across, so you don't have any like weird things you got to hit harder or any of that kind of stuff to get the same result. And of course we have the amount, so if we turn that to zero, we have nothing. So that's it actually controlling the uh, A and B. Now we can also do modulation. So we're in bend, we switch the switch over here to modulation. Now it's looking at the LFO of uh, the modulation section. So I should go here and go to uh, the waveform. Also, the square wave, I'll just show you the LFO real quick. <laughs> and once again, we can switch it back over to bend. And you got that. So that's uh, oscillator A and B. We can bend oscillator A only. And then we've got oscillator A and B plus filter. So if we close this filter up a little bit. It's easier to hear that when you're actually in tone mode of the filter. And then we got just filter. So we'll close this filter up again. This is just going to be just a filter. As you can see. So that's the filter. And then we've also got synchronization of uh, A to B. So what this actually does is it actually resets the oscillator so you get that classic metallic kind of oscillator sound which sounds really good. We're going to just we'll go just to A mix. So here's just A oscillator. So then we can also modulate that. See how great that sounds. It's just a really cool uh, function there. Now we'll go back to A mix only. The next control we have is actually we can change the waveform by aftertouch of oscillator A. Or we can modulate that. As you 
plug in here. So that's, uh, that's your controls of your aftertouch. So once again, go back to go back to A and B here. But that's the aftertouch control, and you can just kind of hear how evenly it is across the key bed. So that's your aftertouch control. Then we got the modulation section. So we go. Uh, this is actually the modulation wheel here. So we got oscillator A and B. We can actually go to a different routing. So we'll go to off. So this won't do anything. And the same thing here. We got we got the oscillator A and B and filter. Once again, it's hard to kind of hear until you put the filter in uh, tone mode. But uh, that's the uh, oscillator A and B. Then we got just the filter. And then we got off. So once again, that's a position that does nothing. And then we've got the waveform uh, uh, selection for B oscillator on this one. So we bring it up. That's uh, B only, it doesn't affect A. But combined with A, it sounds really cool. It's really unique sounding. You can kind of think of it like pulse width modulation in some aspects. Uh, but that's your, your routing. We'll go back to A and B. So you got We'll go back here uh, to the first part of the source. You got bend, so basically your wheel works like a bend. Now this is something that's not offered on the Micromog, uh, but it's actually the filter contour. So you can actually route the filter contour into different routings of your uh, synthesizer. So right now they're going to A and B. Once again, that can be routed to your your modulation, or I'm sorry, not your modulation, but your uh, wave shape. As you can see. So that's uh, the, the next source routing you have. Then you have the, uh, of course, the square wave. So that's your square wave, then you got your triangular waveform. And then you've got your sample and hold auto trigger. So this has actually got a sample and hold circuit. So you can hear it. So it automatically triggers the keyboard and the sample and hold comes in when you bring up this wheel. Then we got sample and hold keyboard. So this won't auto trigger. 
so you can hear that we can play it normally. And I really like this more in the filter. So if we go over here and right to the filter, auto trigger. I think I hear that sounds. And that was actually using the uh, the filter mod by oscillator, the L film synthesis kind of technique there, with the filter there. But um, anyways, that's the uh, that's the the multi mode here. And just want to take a minute here and go over it for you guys that are interested. Uh, this one will be for sale as mentioned uh, through Analog US. And uh, I just want to give uh, Don a shout out here. Thank you, Don, for giving me the opportunity to restore this thing for you and get it back in good health. And like mentioned, there will be a badge on this thing before it goes to market. Dunn's got the badge for it. He's going to put it back on when he gets this thing back. Um, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And there will be more here to come here very soon. Take care.